coming up today on the Donversations podcast. Throughout my journey with her, it was such a transformative process that I was like, I have to tell everyone about being able to eat what you want, not cut out any of your favorite foods, and still being able to achieve your health goals. So I am down over 30 pounds since, wow. that, since that time frame. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Neha. Welcome. So happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great. So usually I don't do a super long intro. Um, I like to just get right to it. But I do want you to talk about what got you on your journey, because I feel like if there's other people that are maybe in those same shoes, then that would be a good place for them to start too. So tell me about your life. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to go way back. I'm going to rewind. And I studied chemistry in college. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I ended up teaching high school chemistry for almost 10 years. And in that process, I did a, a coding boot camp because I never really thought that teaching was for me. I thought that it fell on my lap, but it wasn't something that I chose. So I pursued software engineering. I am a remote software engineer. And in that whole entire journey, I had two girls via C-section. And my second pregnancy, I gained a lot of weight. I was breastfeeding. And I just felt so uncomfortable in my skin. I went back to work and I gained so much weight. It was really uncomfortable looking at myself in the mirror. I would hide whenever anyone would take pictures. I hated clothes shopping. And I would always buy clothes that were way too big for me to be able to hide in them. And, you know, push came to shove. I decided to take action. I went to the gym because I always thought growing up in order to lose weight, all you have to do is eat less and move more. Right. That's what I thought. And so I hired a trainer. I went to the gym. I lost a, a good amount of weight, about 15 to 20 pounds. I couldn't lose the last 10. And I was so frustrated. And I was going on keto diets. I'm vegetarian. I grew up vegetarian. And so I really ate just fruits and vegetables, not, not even peanut butter. I would, I, I didn't even know I gave up all treats. I went, you know, cut out all pasta, all carbs, all bread. It was so frustrating and the scale would not budge. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you know, I heard about macros and everybody was like, how do you lose the belly fat? You know, I'll count your macros. And I heard it over and over and over again. And I was like, what the heck is this macros thing? I, I, I need to look into this. I need to learn about this. Apparently there are so many macro coaches. I found one that I, that I love on Instagram. I hired her immediately. And within the first week of working together, I lost a pound. I was like, oh my God, I did not give up any of the, my treats. I love Taco Bell. So I ate Taco Bell every single week. <laughs> Still, I, the, the scale was moving. And I was like, this is incredible. Throughout my journey with her, it was such a transformative process that I was like, I have to tell everyone about being able to eat what you want, not cut out any of your favorite foods, and still being able to achieve your health goals. So I am down over 30 pounds since wow. that since that time frame. And I became certified. I'm a certified macro nutrition coach. And I just think it is so unfortunate that what I learned while working with her in my 30s, we do not learn going, you know, in, into grade school, elementary school. I did not know how to read a nutrition label. I did not know what foods had protein in them. I didn't know what macros were. I think that the lack of awareness and the lack of education is key to your health. 
and we're not talking about it enough. Right. Well, and there's so many, like you said, keto, you know, you hear of a million different kinds of diets and all you know is what you see. So you see somebody and they're like, I lost 50 pounds doing keto. So it's like, okay, whatever they're eating. Oh, they're eating a, a whole cow every day. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to the store. Exactly. I'm going to buy all the beef. Like, so what is it? What are, what are macros? So macros is short for macronutrients. And it's the major ways of how we get our calories in food. Calories is literally the energy of the food that we eat. Mm -hmm. So the three macronutrients are protein, fat, and carbs. And while it is true to an extent, that if you eat less, you will lose weight, how much less you eat and in what proportions you eat makes a big difference to how you feel mm -hmm. and if you can sustain it. So many people go on crash diets and then guess what happens after three months? They go back to eating what they were eating and they just gain it all back. Right. And it's the yo-yo dieting lifestyle, which is short term. It's, you know, for the vacation, for the wedding that's coming up, for the birthday. But the skills and the tools that, that I learned and now that I teach is for your, the rest of your life. Yeah. How you can adjust your diet to fit your needs because everyone is different. Right. Yeah. That's what I was just going to ask. So obviously somebody would seek you out or somebody out to help them, but is it how much weight you want to lose or how much you want to maintain? Does that depend on the percentage of protein or does it just depend on every individual body? Every individual body. So <clears throat> there is no perfect diet because a perfect diet doesn't exist because somebody might have hypothyroidism. Somebody might be insulin resistant. Somebody might have, you know, to work on their hormones a little bit. Even somebody who dieted for their whole life will have their metabolism down-regulated so much that they need to up-regulate your metabolism to be able to lose weight. Right. It's so different depending on the person, the gender, the height, the weight, the activity level. There's so many factors. And what I actually did before I hired my coach, I used an online macro calculator. I was like, oh, I can do this by myself. You know, let me, I'm a, I'm a science teacher. I was a science teacher. I can figure right. this out. Right. I calculated my own macros. I could not see any progress at all because I did not know the underlying whys and hows. Like it's, a, it's actually a science behind becoming healthy, losing weight in a maintainable and sustainable fashion. Yeah. So what is it? What's the difference? I, I know you kind of already said the definition of calories and macros, but if you're counting your macros, are you saying that you don't need to count calories at all? There is, so, so there's three macros, the protein, fat, and carbs. Those, when you, there's a formula involved, they will get you to your calories. Okay. While calories are important, the number one macronutrient that most everybody is not eating enough is protein. And when you eat enough protein, you'll eat less carbs and less fat naturally. So even if you don't want to count your macros and you don't want to count your calories, looking at how much protein you're eating in every meal will help immediately. That's an immediate action you can take like today in your next meal hmm. and figuring out where your protein is. And if you don't know, you probably are not getting enough because you don't know what foods have the protein. Right. So are you still a vegetarian? I'm still a vegetarian. I, I grew up vegetarian. My parents are, their parents are, it's we're generations of vegetarians. And it was such a big misconception. That was, that was one of the mind blowing things that I learned. Yes, peanut butter has protein in it. It's not a good protein source. Yes, beans and lentils have protein in it. Not a good protein source. Just like peanut butter, nuts, quinoa, hummus, they have protein in them, but they're not good protein sources. For that you? Was like a, for, for anyone. Okay, okay. For anyone. And so now as a vegetarian, I get my protein from tofu, which is also a vegan protein source, and a lot of dairy. So non-fat Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, 
I love Fairlife brand milk because it's lactose free and ultra filtered. You know, cheese sticks, seitan, tempeh, edamame. So I learned all of this while going through my own journey. Well, besides celiac, what is it about gluten that everybody's like, avoid gluten, no gluten, I can't have gluten? Because seitan, isn't that like straight it's made gluten? Out of, it's, yes, it's made out of vital wheat gluten. There's nothing wrong with gluten unless you have a gluten allergy. Okay. There is nothing wrong with it. And that's like, we see somebody avoid gluten and, and you know, they're doing well. We're like, all right, I have to do what that person's doing. Right. It's like the influence. Yes. Yeah. We're all guilty of it. You know, you get on Google or social media and we all just go blind to thinking, oh, my body's probably <laughs> just so similar to theirs. I'll just eat how they're eating, but not like I don't mind beans, but chickpeas, I can't do chickpeas. I don't know why I eat them and no go. So it's interesting because then I was thinking I can't just eat vegan or vegetarian because I don't like all the, the different kinds of beans. But now you're saying it doesn't have to just be beans. Exactly. And you can get your protein from a variety of ways. And so the number one thing is to when you're when you have your meals, protein should be 40% of your plate. If, if we're building a healthy plate, 25% should be fruits and veggies, non starchy carbs, 25% should be starchy carbs, like quinoa, pasta, bread, rice, and then 10% should be fat if the rest of the plate doesn't already account for the fat. What so do you consider fat? Like if it's cooked in fat or? It could be cooked in fat or adding avocado, oil, um, or olive oil, coconut. It could, most of the time, your carbs and your protein will be cooked in, in some kind of fat that mm -hmm. you don't have to, you don't have to add any extra, but just in case. Right. Yeah. I've been doing these episodes about nutrition and they're just fascinating, you know, talking about sugar and the brain and all that stuff. But like you said earlier about reading labels, it's overwhelming, you know, between trying to look at the ingredients and see if they're even something that you should be consuming and then trying to figure out your numbers and calories and protein. Oh my gosh. It is overwhelming. And we didn't learn that. We didn't learn. Like I, I have two girls, so I've right. been teaching them not how many calories there are, just looking at the added sugar, just looking at how much protein there is. And the number one misconception on a nutrition label is we don't have to eat the serving size just because that's what it says on the label. doesn't mean that that's what I eat. Like, yeah, what is that? What is that serving size too? Like, you know, as a six foot five basketball player or me, I'm five foot and, and you know, I'm not as active. Right. So it, it totally like who's making these labels. That's so true. I never thought of that. Yeah, that who is that serving size for? Right. Oh I actually gosh, have a freebie. If you go to nutritionlabel.nehanatiel.com, I'll send it to you. Okay. It's a free guide on how to read a nutrition label and what to look for. Because another misconception is companies are allowed to round. Mm. And so you see the calories and it might not even be accurate. So in that wow. guide, I have a formula for you to be able to calculate your own calories. One more thing I wanted to mention on the nutrition label, if you ever eat tortillas, the Mission brand tortilla, actually many brands, but this particular one, subtracts the fiber. So you think that you're eating half as many calories, but it's actually double. And so fiber oh. is a really important aspect of your macronutrient too, because fiber is a carb. Right. But that counts. That so it's once you learn, you can't unlearn. Right. How did you find that out about the tortillas? Going through the whole process, I used to calculate my own calories just to make sure, because in order to lose weight, you have to eat in a caloric deficit. Why do people do keto? Why do people do paleo or cut out carbs? 
or exercise seven days a week or do extra cardio to be in a caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ways. There's not one way. There's not one correct way. All ways are fine if it works for you. And that's the number one thing. It's all trial and error. You need to figure out what works for you. But you, know, you have to be able to try something for long enough. Most people give up. They're like, oh, this doesn't work. I'm, I'm not, you know, I need to move on to the next thing. That's me after one day. It's like, oh, I ate really good yesterday. Why aren't these pounds coming up? Yeah. Okay, so that leads me to, do you weigh yourself or do you go by how you feel like measurements? How do you do it for you? So there's four ways that four metrics that I use to measure progress. One is I do weigh myself every morning. I actually post it on my Instagram stories every single morning, because oh. if I weigh myself every morning, I'm taking the power away from the number. It doesn't matter. I could care less how much I weigh. Because what matters to me more is how my clothes fit and how I look at myself. Mm -hmm. That number on the scale is literally your relationship with gravity on earth. That's it. Nobody else knows that number for you. You are putting judgment on that number. If it's up, oh, I'm a failure. Oh, I need to, you know, do more steps today. Oh, I need to eat less today because the number is up. No, there's so many reasons why the, that, that scale goes up. Could be stress, could be you didn't sleep well, could be you ate late at night, could be you did a really heavy workout and your muscles are a little bit inflamed, holding mm -hmm. on to water. Maybe you had a meal with extra sodium. So many, or maybe you have your period. So many different reasons for that scale to be up. But failure, self-worth is not one of them. Hmm. So the scale, I do weigh myself every morning. I also take measurements every two weeks when I'm in a cut or eating in a caloric deficit. If I'm not, if I'm eating in maintenance, maintenance is eating at the calories at which I'm maintaining my weight. I don't expect the scale to go up or down as a average, as a weekly average. Then I, you know, I just go by how my clothes fit. And then I do take pictures maybe once a month maybe once every two months. What, but, what, um, I know you said how your clothes fit, but what are you gauging as far as your, your weight number? Is it what you feel most comfortable at? Or is it, are you looking it up according to like what your height is? You should be certain. Oh no, it's about, so when I was growing up, I was a certain weight. Mm -hmm. I am not trying to reach that weight. I'm just trying to reach the weight that I feel good at. Okay. And it was essentially a little bit pre-pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I do not have any kind of goal weight. I could care less about what the weight actually says. It's literally just a measure of mm -hmm. my trends. Am I trending up? Okay. Am I trending down? Or okay. is the trend staying the same? Am I feeling good? Do I have good energy? Am I able to keep up with my kids? Am I able to lift heavy weights in the gym? Am I able to, you know, prepare for my presentations or work and sleep well? Sleep is also a really key metric in how much food you're eating. Because when you're not sleeping well, when you're not eating enough food, your body is in a state of stress. And when you feel stress, you won't be able to sleep as well. Very interesting. It's all related. Hmm. So do you feel the same way about size, the size of jeans that you wear? Do you pay attention to that number or do you feel it the same as the weight on the scale, the number on the scale? I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that it wasn't until my 30s, right now I'm 39, it wasn't until just recently that I realized who cares about the, the size on the jeans? Every single brand is different. That's true. I don't care if I'm a two here or a four here or a six there. How do I feel? Right. How do I feel when I look at myself? So I, I actually in my closet still have my double zero J crew shorts from, you know, 15 years ago. And I'm finally at the point where I know I'm never going to fit into them and I could care less. I could care less if I fit into that. I need to get rid of them just to be able to not look just, at them. Yeah. Yeah. Just to like, I don't care. 
Like it's just sitting there, literally taking up space, but I could care. I don't even like the style anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's a reason to get rid of them. So what so do I do as far as working out goes then? So you've got the diet stuff down. How often do you work out? So I have a trainer who's actually the sister of my macro coach. <laughs> and <laughs> she sets up my entire program. I just follow, I do four workouts in the gym. And she sets up my goals. My goals actually for this year were to do an unassisted pull-up. I was able to do one. I can do two, almost two. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that's that. That's great. Good for yeah, you. So instead of trying to be skinny, I, I'm trying to be strong. I'm trying to take up space and have that confidence to show up and share what I know. And I talked about being in a caloric deficit where you eat less in order to lose fat. I talked a little bit about maintenance where you eat at the calorie where your body is burning so that you maintain. There's also something called a caloric surplus, also called a bulk, which is when you eat a little bit more in, so that you intentionally gain weight, but when you're lifting heavy in the gym, a lot of that will, a lot of that weight that you're gaining will be muscle. Okay. So I'm going to do my first bulk this winter where I intentionally go up in size and see the, that scale number go up and hopefully it'll be a lot of muscle. Oh, that's so, you're like your own science experiment. Yes. I yes, love it's that. all about body recomposition. You can literally figure out how you want your body to look. It'll take time to get there. That's the, it's not, it's never overnight. But one of the key phrases that I always say is the only way to fail is to quit. Yeah, I love that you say that. And I also wrote down and I can never read my writing. So I don't even know why I'm getting on my readers. But I wrote down that you said in one of your recent posts that you had your skin has improved mental clarity. I can't read the word I wrote sleep. So there are so many byproducts of oh my getting gosh. yourself in peak condition. It's not necessarily at the perfect weight or the perfect size. It's, it's your body is homeostasis. Like you're getting to where your body's happy and it's thriving. Body, mind, soul, it's all connected. And when you look at yourself and you feel good, you just feel like you can accomplish anything. Whether that goal is professional, whether that goal is in your relationship, whether it's in parenting, whether it's with time, your finances. I mean, the skills and the tools that I've learned, I have, it, it has bled through all areas of my life. And I just feel like for the first time in my life, I am proud of where I am. And it's, it just feels good. It, it can't, you can't even explain it. It just feels so good. You, you're happy with your journey. And that you're makes excited me about so happy for you. That is such a cool thing to proclaim. I yes. am so proud Thank of myself. You. Good for you. And that's such a good role model for your girls. You know, not you starving yourself or trying to, you know, wither down to nothing so that you can fit in your J. Crew G shorts from forever ago. How old are your girls? They are six and nine. Yeah, they're getting close to that age where I don't know what happens, but I mean, already, in our mind. yeah, my nine year old, a couple, I would say maybe uh, just over a year ago, she came to me and she said, Mom, my, my belly's not flat. How come my belly's not flat? I have never once said anything about my belly not being flat. My belly is not flat. I had two C-sections. And but I'm okay with that. Yeah. But for her to to even think that it should be flat, it was heartbreaking. Yes. And through this whole journey, I've really tried to emphasize listen, I weigh my food sometimes. I don't weigh it all the time in order to make sure I'm getting enough nutrients. I want to make sure I'm getting enough protein because I want to be strong. And, you know, we compare our muscles all the time. I think about, you know, oh, I can lift this. I can lift you. I can, you know, carry the groceries or get the box from the top yeah. or whatever it is because I'm strong and I want to be stronger. And they have activities. My older one does fencing. Oh my and gosh, so how cool. 
And so, you know, we just went to a tournament and the number one thing I said was, listen, you need carbs because carbs are a, a big source of energy. So we got we, every tournament, we get a donut. And so it's immediate <laughs> energy and she loves it. And she recognizes that, yeah, I need the carbs for the energy, but I also need the protein and the fat to make sure that I'm staying full. I don't get hungry during the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so every macro has its, has its role. It's important. There's not one macro that's more important than the other. And just recognizing the balance of it all. Well, and you key. said too, like there's no good food or bad food. Exactly. I, there's candy in the house, you know, there's Lucky Charms, there's jelly beans, whatever it is they want to eat, no problem. But they, they also know that fruits and vegetables have their place. We need to eat protein, carbs, and fat at every meal. And yeah, you can enjoy your treats because essentially all food can be broken down into fats, carbs, and protein. And it's just a matter of the ratio that we're having between the three. So mm -hmm. foods that we should eat more of and foods we should eat less of, but no such thing as good food or bad food. That's great. Yeah, because it's everywhere. And especially, I just, I get so overwhelmed at the choices. You know, you go to the store and it's like, it used to just be, ruffles and lays and doritos and now there's like shelves and shelves it's just like oh my gosh i can't I and can't when decide. you have when you have so many options that's why the awareness and the knowledge really comes into play because then you can be in control the marketing is insane mm -hmm. you know there'll be even even at the gym that i go to there's a bar that was like Oh, high in protein. And then you look at the serving size, you would expect the serving size of a protein bar to be the whole bar. No, it was just half the bar. So and then who's double... gonna eat half. Exactly. And so they companies try to mislead you because all they want is money. All they want is profit. But when you are informed, you're in charge. And you get to decide what you want to put into your body and how much of it. Oh my gosh. I love that. And you're so good about talking about being in tune with your own body, listening to your body, what agrees with you, what doesn't pay attention journal or whatever you have to do. So that you really pay attention to how it is affecting you, not just on the scale, but how exactly. you feel. Right? It is so personal. And, you know, a lot of people think that weighing their food is, is going to become an obsession or they, they will develop an eating disorder, but I have to counter that with you don't know what you don't know. Weighing your food is a temporary tool just to bring the awareness. Mm -hmm. Once you already know and you can make the choices, you don't have to weigh anything. Right. Because you already know. Yeah. But how do you get to that? I mean, if you wanted to save up for a vacation, don't you need to know where you're spending your money in order to figure out how you're going to save for that vacation? It's the same thing with food. It's not an obsession. It's literally just creating awareness around your own habits. That's so great. What do you think is, what's your favorite vegetable? What's the, what do you oh, think? Oh, I the... love broccoli. <laughs> I you love it, broccoli. Is it the best one for you? Do you think if people had to start no. somewhere? <laughs> I mean, no, I really don't. You know why? Because it's again, so personal. Yeah. Any vegetable there, I mean, there are fad, fad vegetables, you know, yes. like the spinach, yes. the kale, <laughs> yeah, those green smoothies. It doesn't matter. I don't drink smoothies. You know why? Because I'm short. And if I drink my food, then I will feel hungry and I'll end up eating more. Mm -hmm. I like to eat my food. I'm not a fan of smoothies. That doesn't mean that they're bad. Right. That doesn't mean that somebody else might not enjoy the smoothie or it'll fit in their lifestyle better. That's okay. It's yeah. so personal. So what's next for you? I mean, this has to be kind of an obsession. Once you learn all about that stuff, you have, once you learn something, it's like, I want more, I want more. And it, obviously you're a scholarly type of person because you have a lot of background. So what, what are you learning about now? Or what do you want to do? Oh yeah. So I have a coaching program. It's called the mindful macros journey, and it emphasizes the entire life in helping busy professional women lose the last 10 plus pounds to gain that confidence without extremes or fad diets. And so 
you can find me on Instagram. That's where I'm mostly active at macro friendly Lacey. I can send you the link. Yep. I'll put it all in the show notes for sure. And really it's just the more that I learn, just like you said, I just love being able to help people with realizing that the tools and the skills that I teach them is for life because then they can feel good no matter the scenario, no matter if they end up staying at home or they're going on vacation or they're prepping for a wedding or a party or they get pregnant. Any kind of scenario anyone goes through, you just, it's all in the mind and realizing the science behind it and that information and the knowledge really helps them because everybody has to eat every right. day. <laughs> well, for one, you do not look like you're about to be 40. So obviously there's proof there that what you're doing is working. Have you worked with menopausal women? I have. I have worked with menopausal, perimenopausal, postmenopausal. I have. Yeah. And everybody blames the hormones, but really it's it's the it's the diet, actually. So hormones do play a factor, but majority of the time it's the diet. Wow. And when you look at what you're actually eating and what you're putting into your body, it just makes a big difference. Do you do the intermittent fasting? I personally don't. Mm -hmm. I think most people don't need to fast. I'm not going to say that it's good or bad. Right. Because again, it depends on your personal lifestyle. But I feel I, I'm somebody who loves food. I feel like if you mo most of the time I see that when people fast, they end up eating more yeah. to compensate because yeah. they're just so hungry and they're not prepared to consume so many calories in just two meals versus the three, it would have been just easier <laughs> and better for their body to eat the three meals. Right. So that's what I see most of the time. That doesn't mean that if it works for your lifestyle, I mean, some people work nighttime jobs or certain people can adapt to different right. scenarios and it works. So, so again, the trial and error is key. Okay. Figuring out what works for that particular person. Love it. Neha, you have been such a great guest. I have learned so much. I'm not even kidding. Like this has been so eye-opening. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. I just think it was great information. I can't wait to air it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very passionate about nutrition and just everybody deserves to feel good. Yeah, no, you're right. And I love that you're not a gatekeeper about it. You want everybody to know all the information and then, and the younger that we can teach people, the better, you know, get rid Absolutely. of these eating disorders and all that stuff and have people just be um, strong and knowing what's best for their own body. So thank you so much. And I'll put everything in the show notes, but I will be in touch. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a like. And if you have not yet subscribed, subscribe. Have you subscribed yet? Please do. I'd love to have you on board. And if you have any ideas, suggestions, input, leave it in the comments below. Have a good day.